Next question is from Zach. What are your thoughts on methylene blue? Oh, this is a good one. I have quite a few thoughts actually. So the first that comes to mind before we get into any any of the evidence that's looking at methylene blue or has looked at methylene blue and how it might affect human health, I just want to comment on logical inconsistency. So something that I've found, I'm not sure if amusing amusing is the right word, perhaps ironic is, is better, uh, is that many of the the wellness influences that are seemingly promoting methylene blue now are the same people who I've seen previously take certain positions about other foods that where something is not natural, it, it must not be good. You know, natural is good. And if it's synthetic or artificial, it must be bad. That, that, that actually falls under what's called the naturalistic fallacy or appeal to nature. And it's certainly not something that I agree with. I think there are many examples where natural uh, products like tobacco and cannabis, uh, cocaine, certainly at certain exposure levels are deleterious, arsenic, heavy metals, the list kind of goes on. And then there are examples of things that are not natural, that are man-made, that can be beneficial. You know, and we could list countless examples um, you know one that comes to mind is insulin for people with type 1 diabetes that is synthetic it's manufactured by humans but it's absolutely life-saving for people with type 1 diabetes without it they would die so I don't buy into the naturalistic fallacy but I find it somewhat ironic that there are people who use that line of thinking for example say you know seed oils they don't just they're not just found in nature. They are produced and manufactured by humans. That's true. And I've seen people say, well, you know, and that that is why they are not fit for human consumption. These things are not natural. Therefore, they're bad. Yet, they're the same people often that are now promoting methylene blue. And methylene blue is certainly not natural. Uh, methylene blue was, I believe, first produced in the late 1800s within the textile industry as a fabric dye, a blue fabric dye. And then later, uh, and I'm not sure exactly how, but people started studying it and looking at how it might affect human health. So pushing that kind of logical inconsistency to the side, what do I think about methylene blue? Well, there is some interesting research looking at methylene blue, particularly from a mechanistic point of view. And what we understand is that methylene blue does affect mitochondrial function. It seems to affect the ability of mitochondria, which reside within our cells, to produce energy, to produce ATP. And it also appears to have some antioxidant function. But the human studies and the, and the animal studies that have been performed are relatively small in terms of the number of subjects in these studies. They're typically very, very short studies. There are a few human studies that have gone um, for a year or longer in very specific populations. But has whether this has you know any type of efficacy and and safety in healthy adults, which is seems to be who it's being marketed to, I can't really say because there doesn't seem to be any studies, clinical studies, interventions, going over weeks or months in healthy adults looking at whether the supplementation of methylene blue versus a placebo has any effect on you know, certain outcomes. So unlike something like creatine, it's not really something that I could recommend today because I can't tell you what the benefits are that are up for grabs and I can't tell you what the clear risks are and I can't tell you what dose I would be recommending to maximize benefit and reduce the chance of side effects. So I think from a mechanistic point of view, it's interesting and maybe uh, a space to watch. But unless you're a biohacker that is kind of willing to take on a lot of risk, I'm not sure that it's something that I'd put into your supplement stack 
just yet. I am absolutely excited to share an exclusive offer with the Proof community. This is a limited time offer just for my audience and no doctor referral is needed. Function Health is a comprehensive at-home blood testing service that gives you access to over 100 biomarkers, covering everything from heart, liver, kidney, and metabolic health to hormone levels, inflammation, and nutrient status. That, my friends, is five times more testing than the average physical. I chose Function for my own blood work and to be a sponsor of this show because they are the best in the world when it comes to helping you understand and own your health. It's true, the depth and quality of their testing is unrivaled. And as regular listeners of this show will know, you cannot optimize what you don't measure. Don't guess, test. Use Function to know exactly where your health is today, and then intervene with evidence-based medicine and lifestyle changes to feel your best and reduce your risk of chronic disease. With Function, you get access to very important markers like LP little a, a genetically driven cardiovascular risk factor, APOB, the most predictive marker of atherosclerosis, and LH and FSH, reproductive hormones typically missing from standard lab panels. It's not uncommon for these biomarkers and others to be elevated. For example, over 50% of Function members have an APOB level, and over 20% have an LPA little level that is above the optimal range. You can even add on harder to access tests like cystatin C, a very sensitive marker of kidney function, as well as selenium and iodine nutrients that are essential for thyroid and overall health, yet rarely tested. So what are you waiting for? Run over to functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill today and be one of 1000 listeners to score a $100 credit. That's functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill.